Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today I want to talk about a nimble setup and as you can see behind me we've got a CLI command line interface flashing. Now before I jump into the setup and the prerequisites I just wanted to talk about what you'd missed to get to this stage. So obviously we've got a powered up array I've got a laptop attached to the array via a serial connection using putty and then I've configured that using a board rate of 115,200 using 8 data bits, 1 stop bit and no parity bits. And lastly the other piece that you missed is I've logged in with the default username and password which is admin and admin all in lowercase. So let's jump on to the prerequisites. There's, there's, there's a handful of prerequisites and they are the array name, which is a host name, a what Nimble calls a group name, which is uh, Nimble supporting up to four arrays in a storage cluster with a, a leader that manages I.O. throughout that storage cluster. Now, even if you've got a single array, you still need a group name. So just bear that in mind. The last few pieces are an IP address. So it's an IP management address that you want, and that's IP version 4 which naturally comes with a subnet mask, so you need a subnet mask, and an IP gateway. And the last piece of the command line interface setup before jumping into a graphical user interface is the domain. So let's jump into it. So at the command line, I'm going to type setup and hit enter which is going to bring up a nimble EULA and for the purpose of, of this video I'm not going to read through all that I'm just going to quit out of that and then I'm presented with a, a statement that I have to acknowledge the, the terms and agreements of the EULA so I'm going to say yes to that which you have to say yes to if you want to progress with the installation and then I move on to the array name. So in this example, I'm going to use techvid-demo. The array name, I'm going to use techvid-group. An IP address, which is more than likely going to be different in your case. But mine's 192.168.153.10. And it's a slash 24 subnet mask, so 255, 255, 255, 0. The gateway, my case, again, 192.168.153, and it's dot 2. And the domain name that I'm using is techfits.local. Now, if you just give it a moment once you've entered that, it will then bring you up to this message. Do you want to continue the setup in, in the GUI, in the graphical user interface? And in this video, I'm going to say yes, so let's do that. And as you can see, quite a quick process. Um, the rest of the actual setup follows in the graphical inter user interface. And I've got an IP address there that I need to put into a web browser. So let's jump into it. So I'm now on a desktop in the same infrastructure. And I'm just going to fire up Firefox and put in the IP address of the array. So HTTPS 192.168.153.10. It's also worth noting that other browsers work too. I'm then going to put in the username and password of the array, which is default, admin, admin, log in and accept this warning message. 
and there we've got the start of the CLI configuration that we've used. So it's created a subnet with a tag of management and then used the network that we defined earlier. So for that I'm going to change this to management only, not management plus data. Data meaning iSCSI traffic and it removes these other three options and I'm going to leave the MTU as standard but we can change that to jumbo or custom if required. And then I'm going to add in another subnet and I'm going to call this iSCSI hyphen data and this is just a tag so it can be called whatever you see fit. So my IP address that I've predefined for this scope is 192.168.253.0 and it's a slash 24 again. So two 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 sorry two five five two five five two five five dot zero and because we've selected management here it means I've only got data available here. And for this I've got three options, iSCSI only, which is obviously storage traffic, group only, so this is group traffic for if we're doing scale out and we have multiple arrays then they communicate over this subnet. However, just note that they need to be on the same VLAN. Now in my case I'm going to select iSCSI plus group. I've only got a single array anyway in this configuration and that's what we'll go with. Then we come to what Nimble call a discovery IP, sometimes known as a floating IP or a virtual IP. So this is an overarching IP that's used. And we've got something next called IP address zone which basically means an IP zone scope, is that a single scope, is that bisect, i.e. subnet in a subnet. For example, in my case I've got 192.168.253, I could further split that down into a slash 25, so I've got uh, half the lower IP addresses assigned to one switch within a topology for example and the upper IPs to the other switch and then you've got the option of odd and even which is odd and even IP addresses so in my case I'm just going to keep that as single and then I've got the MTU options again where I can make this jumbo frames so I'm going to click on next that brings me to assigning interfaces to the subnets that we've just created. So I'm going to use ETH1 and ETH2 for management. That means I've got two ports that are used on, a, on each controller for management. So if I have a port failure on the management end, it doesn't fail over to the other controller. I'd have to lose both ports, both management ports, for that then to do a controller failover. And the remaining ports, I'm going to pick as iSCSI data. Which as you can see, also ha I have the option of none. So I, it's not a mandatory requirement that I must assign them as something. It's optional. But also bear in mind, you may have a different number of interfaces here on your configuration, depending on your hardware. So from that, it then asks me to assign IP addresses to the iSCSI data subnet. And I'm just going to sequentially follow on from the dot 10 IP address that I used as the discovery IP. So dot 11, dot 12, 13, and 14. And lastly on this window we've got diagnostic IPs. So these are IPs that are used for ICMP traffic and also other services. So you can use this to ping controllers to see if the controller is up and both controllers should ping.
ping and be available. So even the standby controller, you should be able to ping when it's not active. So again, I'm going to make them sequential from my management IP address. So we went with .10 for management. And, and bear in mind that this is on the management IP scope. So I'm going to go with .11 and .12 in my case. Then I'm going to click on next. That brings me on to domain. And as you can see, again, it's populated what I stipulated in the CLI configuration. And lastly, DNS servers. So adding your DNS servers. In my case, I'm just going to add in one. But if this is going into a production environment, I advise that you add more than one, one, one DNS server. So you've got resilience there. I'm going to click on next and then it comes on to time so you've got the network time protocol server if you're running NTP so enter the IP address there or a host name in my case 192.168.153.2 and self-explanatory but enter in your time zone and click next and the last piece on this setup wizard is uh, email alerts. So as it says here, this is where it's coming from, the address used, and it does not need to be a valid email account. So it can be a pseudo address. Just bear in mind that the email address that's used has to be a routable domain name so I can't use .local so I'm going to use .co.uk and then you can send that to uh, singular email addresses in your environment what, whatever you choose group email addresses etc I'm not going to add any, add any in on my case then I've got send event data to HP Nimble storage support. I'm going to leave that ticked. So that basically utilizes SNM, uh, SMTP even to email over details. However, you need to note that Nimble will try to send things securely before reverting back to uh, email. So it'll go over port 443 HTTPS to infosite. So I'm going to leave that ticked anyway in this example. And then I have to put in a SM, SM, SMTP server for my relay email server. So just remember that this needs setting up. If you're using Exchange, for example, you need to set up a receive connector to allow these to be imported into that real server. So again, I'm going to put dot two as my IP address for that. I then move on to diagnostics for Nimble Array. And as it says here, allow HP storage support to collect analytic data automatically from the array. So this is just telemetry data only to be uploaded into InfoSight. And again, as I said, this will be all secure over port 443. And if there is issues with that, it will revert back to sending an email uh, over by default port 25. But again, you can configure that if required at a later date. And the last item on this list is HTTP proxy. So if you need a connection, if you proxy outbound, then you have to add in your proxy server details. I don't have a proxy by the way, but I'm just gonna tick so you can see what that consists of. And it's quite self-explanatory. Hostname or IP address of a server, 
per port that you're using to proxy and credentials in order to support that, that proxy. So as I said, I'm not using a proxy, so I'm going to untick that and I'm going to click on finish. So as you can see, it's just going through the motions. This takes up to a couple of minutes. So in my case, this took a couple of minutes, so I fast forward to get to this point. And there's a couple of important things to note here. Um, just mentions about the following firewall ports for outbound, outbound access. So Nimble utilise SSH over port 2222 and then there's a, a, a DNS entry name there for that. And this is for a secure tunnel for HP Nimble support services. Now, bear in mind that if you put a permanent pinhole in your firewall with that port open, now access into this array must be enabled via a checkbox anyway. So as long as you've got that tick box unchecked, then you are not going to be able to access the array from outbound anyway. The other thing to note is the SSH session, when the tick box is checked, the session is initiated from the client side. What I mean by this is traffic is initiated from, from the array going to nimblestorage.com. So if you have a stateful packet firewall, then there is typically no need to put any sort of rule in place because SPI will obviously let that traffic through and allow traffic back in for that session. And the other couple of things to note that it mentions around the firewall are, here you go, port 443, obviously HTTPS, and these are for diagnostics for nimble analytics and heartbeats. This is feeding back into Nimble's InfoSide. And then you've got update.nimblestorage.com for software downloads, i.e. firmware, firmware to download onto the array. Once you've got them set up in your firewall, you're good to go. So I'll click continue. It takes me back to this uh, security risk. I'm just going to accept this again. And it logs me back into the Nimble array. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then please like and subscribe.